Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the German Tier 8 Premium Medium Tank, the Panzer 58 Mutz. Now this is a tank that you will be able to get in the old new season pass that's out. And yeah, you've already earned this tank before. Most people should know what the Panzer 58 Mutz is all about because you will have earned it, what, two or three seasons ago? Maybe even a bit longer than that, but it was it was a season pass tank really not that long ago. And if you already own the tank, you'll be getting about, I think, 3.6 million silver. Or is it 3.3 million silver? One of the two. You'll be getting a nice little boon of silver from this Panzer 58 Mutz. And what do I think about the Panzer 58 Mutz? Well, it's a pretty good medium tank. It's not really got much armor, but it's got troll angles and i'll always say it's got batch at armor right where it's not the thickest armor in the universe more than likely you're gonna get penned most of the time but you do randomly ricochet shots from it which can be quite nice you've got 280 alpha which it never used to be the case to be fair for the panzer 58 mutts and that is that the mutts back in the day actually had 240 alpha and yeah, they buffed it up to 280 a wee while ago, and I covered those buffs in, I think, the last video I did for the Mutz, which would have been actually for the previous season pass, you could earn it. And yeah, they buffed it up to 280 millimeters, or 280 damage, sorry, not 280 millimeters, 280 damage, which gives you a really nice round for a medium tank. 280 alpha on a medium tank is actually really nice because you tend to hit for between that 260 to 320 range and it just feels like you've got a little bit extra stopping power than you do when you run with 240 i just uh, yeah and then they also buffed like the accuracy some of the dispersions and it just made it that this gun was no longer that troll you had some sort of some sort of damage power some sort of stopping power with it having 280 and it it felt more consistent in the fact that you were actually going to hit the shots you were firing as well which was lovely and to be honest the Mutz is a pretty decent tank it's got 50 kilometers an hour top speed which is fairly average for a medium tank it's got pretty decent camo that you know you can get down to a decent level as well so the gun handling's pretty good. The DPM's pretty decent. You've got a decent slab of hit points of 1,400. Like, on the whole, it's just a pretty okay medium tank. It's not, again, it's nothing to write home about, but it's a pretty balanced, pretty average tank that you can do well with. Obviously, sometimes you'll do badly with. As with most tanks, it's what happens when you have a perfectly balanced tank, and I feel like that's what the Mutz is. You've got to expect that, obviously, it's not the most well-armoured tank in the universe, so you have to temper your expectations in how aggressive you can be. But if you play it a bit more like a CDC, for example, obviously not with the top speed, but with the way that you play it, as in, like, play, uh, play to not get shot, pretty much so you poke ridge lines when tanks give you the opportunity to shoot them without getting shot back that's what you really want to do and that's where you'll really ex excel with this mutt and yeah i've really enjoyed playing it i really do enjoy playing it and i do need to play it some more as well by the way this blind shot i knew where the stg probably was and we hit him once are we gonna go for it again he's still there good night mr guardian stg that was a lovely blind shot i love that that was i uh, pat on the back me Bat on the back. So, yeah. What do I run in terms of a crew? Well, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Camouflage Expertise, Muffled Shot, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun. The three gun perks to make sure that this gun is as good as it can be, because I really do want to make sure, that because that is the one thing about this tank that is nice, is the gun. So I want to make sure the gun is as good as it can be, right? The two camo perks, because you can get the camo to be pretty decent on the old mutts, and... I just want to help it out if I can, because if I can have that extra little bit of camo that I can squeeze out of this tank, then I can have situations like this. I mean, obviously, that guy is actually quite a distance from me, but we are perma-tracking him, by the way, which is beautiful. Yeah, the uh, situations like this, where I can keep firing at this dude, and this dude just, he just can't see me. Like, he has no hope of seeing me, and we can just farm away without getting spotted and have a good time. And that's why I run that setup. And in terms of equipment, I run the advanced loader, the vertical stabilizer, or the gun stabilizer, and optics. Optics to be able to spot for myself, have a good view range setup with that. I mean, you can get your view range up to 486 with optics, situational awareness, ball leader, etc. Because it does have a base view range of like 380. You want the gun stabilizer, again, to make sure that the gun is as good as possible. And the advanced loader to have the best DPM you can get out of the tank. And you will have a pretty damn nice time with this MOTS. Like I say, you've just got to expect that it's not the most armored tank in the universe like you can ricochet shots like you've just seen but don't expect it to so this game here on 
Nibelberg small. There's only two tanks left on the enemy team. We managed to make light work of the enemy team, really. We've got HE loaded for this IKV-65, because we do have 45 penetration on our HE rounds. And with 45 pen, we should be able to go through this little tier 6 Swedish tank destroyer, because it's basically got no armor. We get shot straight through its lower plate for 345, which is a little bit disappointing, because that's a low roll. It's 370 on the HE. And we get to finish him off. And we finish the game with a really nice total there for the... Mutz on Nibelberg Small. We finished with four kills, 5.4k damage, 1,000 assist, ace tanker, the sniper, the high caliber, 2.2k base XP. Really nice game there for the Panzer 58 Mutz on Nibelberg Small. And it just showed off what you can do with the, the Mutz, right? You can get flanking, get into flanking positions and then just start working them over the DPM. Put yourselves in positions where you're not getting shot at, but you can just keep this gun singing and you'll have a great time with the mots and i mean the penetration on the tank ain't too bad either really you've got 212 on the standard ap with 259 on the apcr which is really nice it means you'll pen everything you're going to face really except for maybe some of the more heavily super heavy armored tanks i should say at tier 10 but realistically you're technically not supposed to fight those tanks so that's the way that is but you can pen them if you get to the sides and stuff because you have apcr you're not stuck with some sort of round like a heat round where even getting around the sides of those tanks can be pain because it just gets absorbed and with the shell velocity at 1000 meters a second on the standard ap and 1250 on the apcr you've got pretty damn nice velocity as well and we're on the second replay here in the mutts and on the mutsy baby we are on this map, which is, it will come back to me in a second. Hidden hidden Village? Yeah, Hidden Village. And we have taken the mid ridge here on Hidden Village. We are bottom tier, which is never a good time for a tier 8, tier eight medium tank, is it? I tell you, I had, a, I had a hard time trying to get bottom tier games for this tank, by the way. I ended up playing, I think it was 13 or 14 games in this tank and saw it bottom tier once or twice, actually. I, I got one shot by a Death Star after on the cross on Mountain Pass. It was not a good time. Yeah, I got I, I went, tried the cross on mountain pass and got one shot by Death Star. It is what it is. It happens. It's tier ten, and yeah, this is the, like the second, the other game I actually managed to get against tier tens. The matchmaking recently. I don't know if anyone else has noticed the matchmaking recently. If you end up not jumping about, so say if you're grinding a tech tree tank, and you end up playing said tech tree tank like nine, ten, eleven, twelve times. You know, you you grinding the XP on it, right? You that's what you're grinding. Matchmaking's really not been that bad recently. But most I've been seeing, what, plus one? And then my own tier, you know, minus one, minus two. More regularly than I've been bottom tier. I don't know if it's just me, but that's just how I felt with the matchmaking. If I've stuck to one tank, if I've, if I've flitted about and played, say, the Mutts, then played a tier seven, then played a tier nine, then played a tier six, then the matchmaking is just it's normal self. But when I feel like I've been grinding one tank, for some reason, it's just, it's just it's, the matchmaking's felt better. But, and, and that was my experience because I was I got two really nice well I got two games that you're gonna because this is a three v replay video by the way I got two really nice games in the mots and I thought well I want one that's bottom tier so I'll see if I can get a bottom tier match and I yeah I just I could I couldn't get one <laughs> it's just it's one of those things I mean everyone's going now please give me your RNG on matchmaking please give me RNG and they're like smashing the the dislike button going. I'm disliking this video because I want that matchmaking and if I you know that's that's the way it is and it's probably true and yeah I don't know what I'll say what I'll say to you is play 10 games play play a couple of games in the same tank when you're grinding some XP and just document document what your matchmaking is like see see what it's like because yeah yeah recently it's, in the past couple of weeks it's not felt that bad for me which is quite nice it's quite nice for a change not to get hammered in the face by plus two all the time isn't it but anyway, I digress. I, well, I don't even know what that tangent was. We're on this map on Hidden Village. We've taken the mid ridge. Not, well, to be fair, that tangent covered up a boring three minutes of this game where we've managed 543 damage with 986 assistance. We're pretty locked down just because of a waffle Panzer IV. We got blind fire. But we've been trying to blind fire artillery and he blind fires us. I suppose that's karma for trying to just blindfold the artillery. That's what we've been doing this entire this entire time on this ridge line, by the way. If you're thinking, why is he just shooting into the distance for no reason? It's because I've been trying to blindfold the artillery. We've been watching the shell tracers and seeing where it is. We try and shoot it there. I'm pretty convinced he's behind that building, but we're just not hitting it. And that's sad. Seb's moved up to see if he could spot anything else. And the TDs slash medium tanks at A7 are starting to move up too. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to move up, see if I can get myself in a position to get shot into the Waffle Panzer IV 
and then see if I can get up to a position to shut down the 268 version 5 that's sitting at E4. And there's that pesky artillery. Did you see how close we were shooting to it at the end? And we still didn't manage to hit it. Sad times. I always I love trying to blind fire artillery. I, I think I said it in the Sentax video till the day. Try, if you can see the shell tracers and you know roughly where they are, blind firing the artillery is satisfying. It's not as satisfying as it used to be because it used to be the case that in a fair few tanks you could actually one-shot them and if you one-shot them blind, it's hilarious. But you're still getting some nice damage off on them sometimes and it can be great. So, we're up to 1,500 damage, or 1,600 damage, 1,400 assistance, and we were pushing up just to get rid of that guy. We wanted to get rid of the 268 version 5, which we've accomplished. Mission success. And now we're in a position where, hopefully, we can get some shots into the back end of these guys for free. Unfortunately, we missed a shot on the ISM. Just waiting for the reload now, and hopefully we can get a shot into the back of the Jagdpanzer, which we do. And it's like, oh, goodness me, there's an Iron Rain. Hello, sir. I just want to try and get some shots into this guy if I can without taking a hit myself. I get lucky that the Iron Rain bounces, but we do pop one straight into his engine. We end up hitting one HP in a dream. One HP in a dream, people. We hit the Iron Rain with the HE, which high rolled by quite a significant margin. You know, it's 370, we hit him for 391. Okay, okay, okay. We'll take that. And unfortunately, we left him on 1 HP, so he's not dead. But we did also take a hit from him, which means we're now a one-shot for pretty much everything, which is not good. We've seen the Highlander coming this way, the Centauros looking this way. This is not going to end well for me or the M103, really. The M103 is going to have some backup from the TDs, though. And they've started to cap our base. So I'm like, mm, you know what? I'm not going to be the best use of my hit points there because they're just going to shut me down the moment I poke over. I don't want to do that. I've got to then... You know, I don't have any armor, so what I've got to do is use my mobility to get me in into a position where I can get this gun working again. It's not going to work against the Highlander there, the Centauro, because again, the moment I try to look for a shot on them, I'm going to have to hit the specific spot to kill them. They're not going to have to do that to me. They'll just go, oh, a mutt, and shut me down, and it's not going to go well. So we're going to reposition. If they attack that M103, by rights, those two TDs should have shots at the uh, those guys attacking him. So what I'm going to do is help this medium tank and try and get a shot into this tank destroyer that's very alone because there's only three tanks left on the enemy team. So we're going to see if we can get a shot into this tank destroyer and get rid of it if we can. I'm kind of expecting him to be looking this way a little bit, so we're going to take it a little bit careful. We spot him up, he spots us, we get a shot into the superstructure of the Jagdpanzer, and it's like, okay, he's looking my way. He takes a hit from the medium tank behind us. I look for the cheeky shot into his cupola, but it misses, but this Jagdpanzer's coming, and I'm like, oh, good gravy. This guy's this guy wants me. I, I don't want to take this hit. So... It's a 50B that is behind me at D0. And the 50B is pinged to reload. 25 seconds. This Jagdpanzer is quite comfortable sitting here trying to wait for me to make a mistake and get a shot. I already know this 50B can shoot the Jagdpanzer because he shot it a minute ago. So I'm like, you know what? Patience. Let's keep this Jagdpanzer distracted. Keep baiting him to maybe think that he can get a shot at me. And when the 50B is loaded, he can do this. And... It is good night, sir, Mr. Jagdpanzer E100. Patience. I knew where my teammate was. All I had to do was keep him lit for him and not get shut down, and we could win that little engagement, and that's what we did. We're now behind the Highlander. That was a silly, silly RBRT. And we tried to get him, but unfortunately we mucked it up. We do get to shut him down, though, with the shot into his back end. Now the Centauro's turning around. We're going to be cheeky, get the one shot into his side. And because he turned to face us, the Turan managed to slam a shot into shot the Centauro down as well. And we faced the game with the victory. Three kills, 3.2k damage, 2.5k assistance. The Lever Schleilo's medal for killing two tanks two tiers higher. The Ace Tanker, 1942 base XP. A really damn nice game there for the Panzer 58 Mutts in not so nice a matchmaking there. And we're on to the third and final replay. And oh boy, it, this, this game, this game goes off, okay? So we're on to Prokhorovka. A glorious map for, for a medium tank with decent camo, pretty good view range, and pretty damn snappy gun, and gun depression, because this tank has 10 degrees of gun depression, which is utterly beautiful, and for a map like this on Prokhorovka, this is going to be a very good time for something like a Mutz. So, we're going to take the position here at E3, E4, because if you saw the Sentax video the other day with Bossing Prop from the other spawn, this is the opposite side to that spawn, and you are, yeah, th this position is strong. 
That's that's all I can say. You can use this position, spot the one-two line quite easily. You can spot people that sit on the train tracks at G6, and you can get so many shots across this ridge basically everywhere. And you spot people like this Canonian Jagdpanzer. If you've got enough people shooting, you're going to get a lot of assistance. But my, what you might be seeing here on proc on this game is encounter. And a lot of my team have just not bothered with this side of the map whatsoever. We've got two heavy tanks at B2, and we've got quite a lot of our tanks have gone towards the encounter, which is never too good for us. But with two heavy tanks behind us at B2, maybe they'll get some shots out for us. And this is where having 280 Alpha is pretty nice. We're all on this ridge line because this is where we can put out some hurt. And it, it, it feels like we're actually cutting these tanks, not actually just sort of scratching them with 240 Alpha. That two, extra 280 when you're starting to roll for like 290, 300 every now and then is really, really quite nice. What was that aim? That was dreadful. Good Lord me. That passed me. That was terrible. Oh dear, we missed the shot on the Coppola there of that Astron Rex. I do kind of want to get rid of that guy because he's got pretty good alpha. But when you're fighting this ridge line here at E4, you do not want to stick around on the ridge line for far too long. For Yeah, well, you don't want to stick around on the ridge line for too long because you'll start taking hits and that is not a good time. And it's quite easy for your hit points to go... Well, it's quite easy for this fighting this ridge line, right? For it to go, oh, this is going really well. We're getting a lot of assistance. We're getting a lot of damage out. And then all of a sudden it's bang, bang, bang. Your hit points are gone and you have to be exceptionally careful. So this Centurion goes up on, on top of the ridge line. I get the shot into his back end to track him in place. And I was hoping that if I tracked him in place on top of the ridge line, the two heavy tanks behind me would end up shooting it. But unfortunately, no, they didn't shoot it. And these, like the Black Prince and the KV-3 are very far advanced. And I was still expecting them to take some hits. But nothing's quite happening. So I'm kind of hoping that these two would actually move forward so that they can get some shots in Because sitting at the back because to be honest, this is the thing you may be in heavy tanks on Prokhorovka But you can be some you can be useful in a heavy tank on proc because say like a Lerva has 10 degrees of gun depression It's got a pretty nice gun. It's got pretty good turret armor for example. That's that's what at the back That can be fantastic in the position that I'm currently using and you never want to think, okay, I'm on proc in a heavy tank. I can't really do anything. I'm going to sit in the back corner because, yes, yeah, it's, it's, you're not going to be helping the team too much. But these guys, thankfully, are starting to move forward now that they've seen the two heavy tanks advancing, which means that they can help me because at the minute, we've just taken all those hits and basically we've not got many hit points left. I know there's a Kanonen Jagdpanzer about there. He's got 390 alpha, which means that... Yeah, my hit points will evaporate in one shot from that guy. So I have to be exceptionally careful on this ridge line now. I can't peek for too long because I will just die if I'm not careful. And there we go. We bounce a shot from the back. It looked like an APCR round. It was probably the Canonia Jagpans. We got a little bit lucky to survive there. Like I say, the Mutz doesn't have much armor. But, like I say, angles. You can still bounce shots off of your turret, which is definitely quite nice. So, we're looking for shots now into the cupola of the VZ-44-1. I'm just trying to get rid of him because he's at an angle that I don't want him to be at anymore. And we're just not finding it. He ends up missing us with that shot there. And we're just being as careful as possible. I go for a blind fire where I thought one of the APCR rounds come, came from earlier on at H1. Because I thought, well, maybe the Canonian and the Jagdpans are sitting at H1. People tend to do that. But we, unfortunately, don't hit the shot. We're just being as careful as possible. There we go. The VZ-44-1 ends up getting spotted. We go for the shot into his Coppola, and unfortunately it misses yet again, which is very, very sad for this tank. And we go for the shot again, and it's just not going in. This is the thing, though, with the Panzer 58 Mutz, because you have that 1.9 second aim time, which is absolutely glorious. Your gun is pretty much always aimed in, especially when you're on a slow ridge line like this, and you can keep poking up constantly. You're basically always ready to shoot, and that's quite good. The Centurion is looking for shots at us, so you can see what I'm about to do. We get a shot into the VZ-44-1, and I'm instantly looking at the Centurion. I'm instantly looking towards him to make sure that he's not going to get a shot at me, or he can't get a shot at me, because that's I, I just don't want that at this point. You can see we're constantly worried about him, because he could put me down to a one-shot. He could actually kill me. Um, yeah, it's not, not a thing for us. So he puts a shot into us, which actually makes us a one-shot for him. But he gets shot from the right-hand side. So, he's pulled back. So, we're actually safer to go back in that position. I want to try and help this defender out if I can. Because I can then get this VZ-44-1 into a crossfire. We go for that drive wheel there. We go for that front end like we did. Because I thought maybe I'd track him. We did. We go for it again. Unfortunately, we don't track the VZ-44-1 that time. 
but he gets shut down by the defender. Now, those two are pushing down the one line. I know that they're going to spot anything that goes down that one line, or whatever is down there is probably fled at this point. We get a nice shot snapped into the SMVCC 67. We're just watching the hill as well, because they have won the hill, and there's shell tracers flying off of that hill. You can see them flying out there. And I was wondering, hmm... I wonder if I can see what's shooting on the hill, or I can see, the, see where the shell tracers are coming from. Maybe I could blind fire it. So you saw that shell tracer whiz past then, and I was like, where was it? Where did it come from? I, I can't see it, okay. The Centurion ends up driving over, so we get a nice shot into the side of his turret, which means he's not quite a one-shot for us, but he's a one-shot for either the Lerva or the Defender that's over on our right. And that Centurion is the thing that I really want to get rid of now because he is in a position where he could end up spotting us. I know there's TDs along that train track and there's TDs at the back. You can see the shell tracers that are flying out. But the SMV CC67 gets spotted and it's like, okay, Mr. CC67, you're going down. We go for the drive wheel shot. Thankfully, the shot flies straight in. It tracks him in place, which puts him in a position where he's sideways onto my friends. I can get another one in to track him in place, and he gets shut down. We've now got shots into the lower plate of a Terrapin, which is an unskinned Diamondback, if you didn't know. And we are now getting the shot straight through his lower plate, putting two nice shots in there, putting us up to 6k damage nearly. But he just about gets away. So this Centurion, I want to get rid of. This rock, you can just see where the shell, shell tracers came from on the train tracks. This rock is between me and those guys on the train tracks they cannot shoot me because of this rock on my left i was very careful about having this rock there so that i wouldn't die from this position because i don't want to die yet unfortunately we missed the two shots on the centurion and to be honest rng did not favor us there because the first two shots looked like they should have really hit that third shot however really looked like it shouldn't have hit and rng rng giveth rng taketh i suppose and we managed to shut down that centurion so we know where at least two tanks are, and that is on the train tracks. So we're going to use our mobility and our camo to move forward, get below this ridge line, get into a position where we can spot the train tracks, and hope that we also don't get shot in the process. But we are lower now than the train tracks in this little dip. We're going to poke up, see if anything gets spotted, but obviously the medium tank is in the position he is, so he would have spotted them. The M56 Scorpion gets shut down, that we managed to get a nice little snapshot in. And I'm going to move myself into a better position to shoot anything that possibly gets spotted on the hill, but also try and get into a better position to shoot the Terrapin. And there is the King Tiger. The King Tiger gets spotted. We poke up, get a shot into his drive wheel. Track, well, it didn't track him in place there, but it did damage his tracks. We do blow the tracks off this time, though. And we're just trying to use the good DPM that this tank has to keep snapping the shots in. We track him in place again, and there goes that King Tiger. Now there's only two tanks left. There's the Terrapin and the Kanonen Jagdpanzer. The Terrapin's been pushed by the... TL1 LPC and the SU 130PM ends up shutting it down. We load HE because with 45 pen we might be able to pen a Kanoni Jagdpanzer, but he ends up losing pretty much all of his hit points. We aim the shot with HE and we do finish him off for 141. And we finish the game with a really nice total there for the Panzer 58 months. We finish with the victory, two kills, 7.1k damage, 2.7k assistance. I mean, that's a good game. Ace tank of the high caliber, the Confederate, 2.7, nearly 2.8k damage base xp that was like nearly 10k combined in a tier 8 medium tank we'll take that every day the Panzer 58 mutts it's a pretty damn good tank and it's a lot of fun to play generally i really enjoy it but you'll be able to get the tank for free out of the season pass which is a good time i mean it, most of you already have it anyway and if you already have it you're gonna get a nice decent amount of silver too so as always everybody thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time A great success!